Yo, what is everybody? Welcome back to Sports Sounders. Aiden, I am Beer Sums, and then Aiden Musk, and welcome back to the show. Today, guys, we have another very exciting episode, and today we are discussing the NBA MVP and who we both feel like who should win this very special award. Aiden, there are a lot of candidates out there. There are a lot of big-time players who at least deserve some consideration or some votes to win MVP. So, yeah, I'm just going to do the four. Who is your NBA MVP for the 2021-2022 NBA season? I'm going to approach this in a weird way. Um, I think it's going to be Nicole Jokic. I believe it should be DeMar DeRozan. And, Brother, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now. And here's my reasoning why. DeMar DeRozan has led the league in the most scored points this year, has the most 50-plus point games this year, broke the Bulls' record for 50 50- plus point games or tied it or broke it. I don't, I, I'm struggling to remember at the moment. He is at some point in the time, single-handedly taken over games. Why? Because Caruso was injured due to one of the dirtiest plays I've seen in the, my entire years of watching basketball. And Lonzo has, who already has experienced several injury problems was injured again after getting the big contract. Do I think that this was okay? I think he's found an amazing partner in Zach Levine, and I think he's got some of the better co-stars in the league. Um, But it's like a flip of the coin here, right? You want Nikola Jokic with consistency and facilitating and leading his team to a very high ranking, or do you want – or do you want DeMar? who's exciting, who's fun to watch, scoring 50-plus games, scoring buzzer beaters, scoring game winners. Honestly, this is an individual award, but tell me, tell me who you turned on the TV and watched who was taking over games. And it was DeMar DeRozan. (laughs) Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Aiden, uh, if this was like the first half of the season, if we're talking like the first like month or two of the season, uh, I don't think that would even be like a bad pick. But throughout the entirety of the season, fair. DeMar DeRozan, yeah, he, he should be a top 10 candidate. He's not top five, but, you know, he should get some respect. For right, he should at least season. be on the list. He should at least be on the list. But, but, but saying that he's like, like, even if you do feel like he should win, I feel like that's a little bit ridiculous because, like I said, this I, is feel, ridiculous. Yeah, I, I know, know who the MVP is going to be, but I feel it should be him. Yeah, this yeah, is no, our personal opinion. That you feel. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the Bulls were at you know, one point in time the number one seed in the East, but you know, they had a lot of injuries and things of that nature. And DeMar DeRozan individually, he's had a great individual season, but knowing how the Bulls were the, away from the number one seed to now being the number six seed are going to be frauds in the playoffs, first round exit. Uh, this year, um, that definitely kind of diminished. First the round exit. What? Yes, it definitely, okay. it's definitely going to diminish DeMar DeRozan's entire so-called case for MVP. But in my opinion, for MVP, to be MVP, it requires like this sort of narrative. And, you know, this is one of the closest races in, in NBA history when it comes to MVP. It's a three-man race right now between Giannis, Jabal Mbappé, and Nikola Jokic. And if I have to rank them, my number three um, in my rankings for MVP it would be Giannis. Just because of the fact that he has a more complete team. Now, in my opinion, Giannis is the best player in the world. But he, at the end of the day, he does have better pieces compared to Giannis. Can, can I also say this? Or the- can, I, can I also say this real quick? Shut up! Jerome Jerome Mbappé's case, Jerome Mbappé's leading the NBA in scoring. 30.6 points per game, 11.7 rebounds, 4 2 assists. Now, I, in my opinion, Jerome Mbappé's best chance of winning MVP was before James Harden became a Philadelphia 76 And the reason why I say this was because... For majority of the season, going into the All-Star break, my pick for MVP was Embiid, obviously. But when you add another former MVP uh, and arguably a top 10 player in the game today, that pretty much erases the narrative for the storyline that you have been the main guy game in and game out. And I know what Joel will be going to the season dealt with some storylines, especially with Ben Simmons and that whole controversy. And again, imagine this point, cast standpoint. You know, even, even though you gave away – um, Tyrese Maxey, my fault, even though he also gave away Seth Curry uh, in that deal to acquire James Harden, you still have Tyrese Maxey. You still have Matisse Thibel, um, right? You still have a lot of great pieces just outside of James Harden alone. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, sweetheart. But Jokic is obviously my MVP and rightfully so. 
because in my mind, Jokic is obviously the best offensive player in the game when it comes to both scoring, rebounding, and playmaking. And when we talk about the most valuable player, that is Nicole Jokic, especially considering the fact that he has endured so much this season. Jamal Murray has not played a single game this year. Michael Porter Jr. only played nine games this year. And in those nine games, he was underperforming after signing a five-year, $207 million contract extension. And Jokic has a far more worse roster than the Sixers or the Bucks or the Grizzlies or the Suns, if you consider Devin Booker an MVP candidate, or the Bulls. The Nuggets starting lineup consists of a 35-year-old Jeff Green and Monty Morris. And the, and the Nuggets still find themselves to be a playoff contending team this year. And, you know, Youngkies just played more games than Yaz and B. You know, I believe Youngkies is playing around 73 games, 75 games of 82 uh, so far this year. And, you know, I believe it's crazy. Yaz- I mean, it's, it's crazy how on another level he is. Now, two years ago, if we were saying that a center could win back to back MVPs, we'd be looked at, we'd be looked at as crazy. I mean, but I mean, look at how the look at how the look at how the ideal ideology, excuse me, has switched. Yeah, I mean, top three big men, three of the best big men in the conversation for MVP is pretty much crazy how the game is transformed. But you know, Yogi just played more games than Johnson and be you know, with Johnson and be I played less than seventy games on the year, and then at that, just to add on to the case, when you say quote unquote, not you say that. Jokic is quote unquote not as good of a defender as Embiid or Giannis. That is true to an extent, but at the end of the day, the Nuggets are a top ten team defensively, and that's with Jokic as the helm of the anchor of the defense. And I believe Jokic right now, as a center, as a big man, I believe is like top fifteen or top ten in steals. So that pretty much translates to the part that Jokic can do any and everything on, on the floor to an elite level. Not saying that Embiid or Giannis can't. But so far this season, considering this, considering the storyline, considering the fact that injuries have pretty much depleted this Nuggets roster the entire year, knowing that Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. have not even played a lot of games this year, and in Michael Porter Jr.'s case, and, and are not planning to do so going to the playoffs, you know, he's the MVP now. You get playoff chances for each team. It's a regular season award, so I don't consider the playoffs as a factor when it comes to the MVP now, the Nuggets may have a rough time in the playoffs, knowing that the fact that the playoffs require both, you know, consistent offense, even though the Nuggets do have Davo Jokic, but it requires a lot of star power and depth as well. And knowing that the Nuggets don't have Jamal Murray and Mike Porter Jr., that will take a big hit on them, knowing whichever team they may face, whether it's the Golden State Warriors or my Dallas Mavericks, or maybe even the Utah Jazz, which is very, very arguable. So um, right now, Jokic is my MVP. I feel like that's pretty undisputed right now. Um, so Yoki is my MVP, and that's why I feel she win. That's why I know she win. And I feel like back to back MVPs are going to be heady in the club that made right now. Well, thank you all for joining us here on Sports Nowadays. Aiden, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and join us for the next episode. Without further ado, that's Darius. I'm Aiden, and we will see you on the next episode of Sports Nowadays. Aiden, peace. peace.